OJ Simpson passed away, and that's really all we've got to say about it. Yeah, because yeah. I've seen too many snippy uh, quips on Twitter and such. Uh, my one yeah. excursion onto Twitter, uh, uh, my state mandated single minute su- uh, excursion onto Twitter daily. Too many snips and quips and snipes and gripes and mostly quips about OJ Simpson having died. I'm not making any jokes about it today. Give me a couple of months because uh, that's how I like to do things. I will say, however, that I hope Billy Joel is uh, rewriting. Uh, we didn't start the fire to include the phrase, OJ passed away. What else do I have to say? <laughs> um, that's it. All right. Hey, if, OJ passed away. What, <laughs> what, what else, else do, do I, have, do to I say? have to say? Right. Legend that a girl who want to get a chance with her dance be cool. This is issue 334 of the Insert Credit Magazine, where I'm J. Jonah Jameson, and these three video game experts have to bring me pictures of Spider-Man before I sound a horrible buzzer. Uh, my name is Alex Jaffe, and if my life had an autosave feature, the icon in the lower right corner of the screen would be a rolling die. Wow. Yeah. The, the, uh, sorry, the, the feature is what? Autosave. If my life had an autosave feature. It's a feature, rolling die. Yeah. Uh, oh, I guess things are other than floppy disks at times. <laughs> you can be a floppy disk, Frank. Um, well, uh, I could, but I don't want to. Uh, my name is uh, my name is uh, Frank Sfaldi, and uh, the the uh, save icon in the corner of uh, my life's screen. You know, let let's let's get rid of the floppy disk. Uh, let's do uh, some other form. You know, it's just it's an animated thing of like a pencil on on like a scroll not a paper and i know you don't write on a scroll with pencil but you do in my game and it's just like a little like pencil like jiggling along on top of a scroll pencil jiggling on a scroll i should have rhymed that with something uh i'm tim rogers and uh i mean it's this answer is very clear for me that if i were i had an auto saving feature in my life the corner in the lower right side of the screen the lower right corner uh, would display a rotating triangle an equilateral triangle because it's as simple as shape and it's easy and uh, i've incorporated them into many things i've uh, visually designed over the years and i, I like uh, i like triangles and uh, like equilateral triangles and also like high frame rates you can't have a spinning circle unless there's a little thing on it unless there's a yeah. design on it of some sort um you know like the mac os uh, beach ball as it's called um nobody likes that beach ball we don't like it um no the triangle though high frame rate the tri- a triangle looks real good you get a triangle spinning at 240 360 frames per second tell me about the color and opacity of this triangle oh it would be white at 80 percent opacity all right that's what i wanted to know that's the news i crave all right i'm brandon sheffield the little icon in the right corner of my what's it would be a little looping gif of a barking dog just a little a little dog doing little barks, and it's got three lines that come out of the of oh, the mouth. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, so it's just a little little, and it's kind of like a little little wiggly drawing. That's what it would be, like a little rakugaki. Now, there's a good reason I asked you about the color of your triangle because my first question is, I'd like to know what you can tell about a video game based on its color scheme. Well, you can tell whether the people making it know about colors. Um, that sounds silly. That's true, but. As someone who not too long ago was trying to hire for a, uh, a an artist to work on a video game, something that I, a conclusion I've kind of come to is that you can teach people all kinds of stuff, but if they don't ha- come to you with a good color sense, you're going to be in trouble from the start. Mm. If people understand how to make colors look vibrant and interesting or intentionally dull in a good way or uh, combined in a pleasant configuration, uh, if they can't already do that, you're going to have a very difficult time. So that's one thing that you can tell from a, a color scheme is what those people think about color, how much they care about it. It means a lot all by itself. You can often tell if uh, anyone involved with the art aspect of the game ever played a ZX Spectrum. Um, if they, uh, uh, if if they if they come to you with concept art that's like all black background with white and uh, red and blue on it. Yeah, one green patch. 
you can usually tell what uh, they think video games look like yeah. in general. You can also certainly you can get a vibe like if you got a bunch of pastels in your in your magical drop three or whatever, it gives you a a friendly vibe. If you got all your blacks and reds, you're like, all right, we thought of this idea in high school and there's <laughs> going to be a lot of bloody stuff. Not that there's anything wrong with that. You can think of things in high school. One one may think of things in high school. <laughs> yeah, yes. you're allowed. If you want to. We, we all may remember the era of, of brown video games, right? Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. was brown looking. Everything looked kind of like uh, like Lunch Lady Land style. Where did that palette come <laughs> from? Like, it's probably not from a video game, right? It's probably a, a cinematic palette that, was the, that a video game copied and then the other games copied the copy. I do mainly associate it with Gears of War. Yeah, Gears of War was the... Uh, uh, kind of the the standard bearer of that particular thing. Well, there there were a lot of movies around. That I, like I I could because I don't know dates. I couldn't yeah, place there. which came first. But there, all the there were so many movies about the various Gulf Wars that were mm. yellow and brown. Mm. There yeah. were there were a lot of uh, like apocalyptic zombie like the the Resident Evil movie uh, that took place in the apocalypse just for one instance of the movie and then they went away from it uh that was all yellow and brown so there was there was a lot of that going around in cinema at the there time was a, well. there was a there was a sort mm-hmm. of a color grading movement uh, <laughs> kind of going on for a little bit of a while where everything was just a little uh, uh kind of aggressively yellow you got you know i mean you look you look at movies of like the late 90s if you think of video games as always being about six to eight years behind uh aesthetic uh visual choices made in in films um you know, not just visual choices, but narrative choices as well. You know, you you would see some stuff that was uh, just kind of a filter. I, I'm thinking of like Steven Soderbergh movies, like where out of sight, it's all orange in some scenes, and then uh, in the uh, the the Detroit scenes, there's a blue filter on everything. A lot of formative films of the late '90s would would slap a filter on whole set pieces or settings, so you ended up with video games that did sort of the same thing. But in that glacially paced video gamey way, where in Gears of War you basically got your brown filter, your tobacco gold filter on the uh, on the whole game, and it was just a shortcut to uh, I don't know realism or verisimilitude or immersiveness, and you got the same thing coming. I mean, movies like Batman Begins, uh, Dark Knight around that time, they made a couple of visual choices where stuff just kind of looked colder or warmer or than you know nature would or could or should and i mean these days we've got uh, if you look at color choices if we if we believe video games and movies have fully become their own things at this point that are also just kind of infecting one another seemingly at random today's problem with movies is hdr color grading that's too nuanced and too soft right and we all experienced a little eye strain at watching a movie these days where it's kind of hard to tell yeah. the difference between color zones. You got to be some sort of God darn air traffic controller of reverse color blindness in order to tell the difference between uh, two colors on a screen. And most of these movies made by the modern colorists. Uh, it's, it's kind of a thing. Also, a lot of that has sort of replaced in, ca- well, it's not in camera, but like in scene lighting Oh yeah, and uh, lighting being less of a, it's not less of a craft, but it's it's less forward in the mix. Yeah, which is uh, a little unfortunate. I I was thinking as as we were talking, I wonder what it would have been like if there were a large, robust game industry in Hong Kong during the early two thousands. After the in the late nineties, people doing so much blue and green in the film industry yeah. over there, just like really just washing yeah. things with blue. Would we have gotten thought experiment for another time, I suppose. Here's our next question. Which video games have the most interesting original takes on what the internet is? Front Mission 3. You want to expand on that? or should we? Yeah, I haven't played Front Mission 3. And anybody who's listening who's played Front Mission 3 would know it's it's got an internet browser in it. Um, you know, all of your, uh, all of your like good tactics RPGs from throughout history uh, they don't just have a battle and then a story part and a battle. There's always something between, you know, a sort of, it doesn't have to be a fully fleshed out hub world. In fact, it's a little best if it's not. Front Mission 3 had an internet browser you could open up. 
between battles and you could read stuff and you could send emails and you could uh, recruit people and learn things. And uh, there was stuff evolving in the world at the time. It was pretty neat. But there were no like avatars floating through two be neon cyberspace. There's um, the obvious Fantasy Star Online where you had your your conversation type emoji things. That was a, kind of a neat thing. I liked mm -hmm. um, the demon network in Devil Survivor, which was basically like you had a DS that could connect locally, but it was across some sort of mysterious demon network. That was cool. And then there's your like internet isekai dot hack, um, which is you're inside the internet. Yeah. You, like you, you as the as the real life human player are playing as a character uh, who got caught into an in world MMO, which is kind of a fun bunch of layers. And did you ever play those games? I never did. Uh, although I'm gonna I, tell you what I did. So let me tell you. What do you think? Um, the concept is really cool on paper, but they're they're you know what I hate to do this, but those games are god darn hacky. Dang it! I mean, I don't want to. I hate to use this phrase, but uh. I'm definitely past the statistical midpoint of my life, so it's time. Uh, it's time to just start laying down the <laughs> law on dot on dot hack uh, for the PS2. I never played those dot hacks because I was always confused about how many there were. By the time I started actually oh, yeah. paying attention to it, there was like seven. Because there's dot hack something one two three four and then there's a doc dot hack something else you one play two three the ps2 ones the answer is you play the ps2 there, ones. but i think there's seven on ps2 i think you play you play those first three in release order is what you do because they're they were the ones that were released uh as sort of the prototype of of episodic content yeah you know? and you know there's oh, yeah. a there's a a mysterious i don't know if it's mysterious there's a dot hack fighting game that is only playable if you purchase the uh, Japanese Blu-ray of the Dot Hack movie. The, the Dot Hack and, movie, and it's that's really it's a, cool. Wait, is it is it a console game? Yeah, it's a wow. it's a it's a complete fighting game that exists solely on a Blu-ray disc that is bid primarily as the Dot Hack movie, and then on the back it's like a bonus. There's a versus fighting game, and it's on PS3 uh, exclusive. It's is there any other video game like that that exists on a movie DVD? There are several video games. I I, I found out about it because I was looking into this recently, and there's there's a bunch of them. So that you may recall the time when there were um, demos on PS3 games, like for example, for PS3 sorry PS3 demos on Blu-rays. So yeah. if you got the um, District Nine Blu-ray. You got a like a God of War demo yeah. for some reason wow. to play on your PS3. Yeah. Um, if you if you got the the movie Stealth on UMD, there was uh, an exclusive Stealth um, track of Wipeout, Wipeout Pure, whichever Wipeout was on PSP. Oh, that's bizarre. There's that like Love that um, Ranko's something day whatever dealy. I can't remember what exactly it's called. Oh, but Rocko's Modern Life. Yeah. Rocko's Modern yeah. Life. Yeah. <laughs> On uh, on Rocco's Modern Life, there's a um, Rocco's Rocco something he made's longest day. Anyway, the second game from Crispies, the makers of of uh, Tokyo Jungle, mm -hmm. is only on that disc. So in in oh, Japan, it God. came out as a Blu-ray, and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it came out as a Blu-ray with the game on it. And then in Europe, it came out as the game that also had the Blu-ray shorts yeah. on it. Um, very interesting. Well, anyway, we sure took a, first of all, we it sure took a, the, the most boring detour possible for me getting to mention <laughs> Dragon's Dogma, um, but that's okay. Um, I just want to point out there were, there were, I, I earlier said uh, four. Didn't like that one, Tim? Games Didn't like hearing for, about this? I mean, no, it's, it's all right. I'm just, I earlier said there were three dot hack games. Uh, I said the trilogy. It's not a trilogy. There's four of them. There are four dot hack games. And That's then there's nice. the dot hack G. I mean, I, I knew GU that. Ones. I played them all. Then there's dot hack GU, which is dot hack two. The yeah. first four dot hacks are, are one game and you can play through them. So the problem is that the, the GU is so small. Yeah. On the on the package that you can really easily be like, wait, which which number two was this? Which number that's, three? Is that's small enough. Anyway, the best internet in the video game is actually the rift in Dragon's Dogma, uh, which is where the pawns come from, which is a medieval uh. internet. I'm I mean, 
I'm not breaking any new ground here by proposing the theory that the rift in Dragon's Dogma is is the internet, but that's what it is. Thank you. In games where you can pick one of an assortment of guys, mm-hmm. when do you pick the big guy and when do you pick the little guy? I pick the little guy every time. The little guy's faster. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. Um, I mean, mostly I'm thinking of fighting games, and the, my when I'm when I'm playing a fighting game for the first time, it's like what is what is the faster most the fastest most annoying character I can be, <laughs> right? Like I want to I want to jump around, I want to bounce off the edge of the screen for no reason. Yeah, I'm always thinking who's gonna do kicks, who's gonna do yeah. good kicks. Yeah, and I feel like it's the small fast guy. Sometimes though, you pick the big guy if you're like a certain kind of player in Samurai Showdown. Because then you can kind of like one hit kill if you're really if you're really clever with your timing and whatnot. But uh, you pick pick the big guy if you're playing tank in a, in an in a memorpica because mm-hmm. you, you you're absorbing the damage the and you pick the big guy. Yeah, I mean, you, you I, should, mean, I, mean I, I don't I don't not? think memorpicas have big guys, do they? Like, sure, they do. They're all you kind of be, in the custom character. You can custom creator. anything you want. You can be kind of you can be kind of big, but I mean, you know, you don't have to be a big guy to be a a tank. You don't have to be a big mm-hmm. guy to be a tank. You can be a little guy who's a tank. It's true, but there's there's the, well, I guess I'm thinking of older ones. There were there were archetypes of like your the beefy whole, the knight, whole big guy, slow, little guy, fast uh, thing has not a hundred percent been a. Uh, it's not. It's not exactly been the thing in the modern video. Yeah, game. it's an older archetype. There's actually Abigail in Street Fighter Six is like or um, five, I guess, uh, is very fast giant character. Yeah, you have a you have a, they they've actually kind of flipped it on Street Fighter a while back now. Yeah, where it's uh, you get your big fast guy. Yeah, I usually the first time I have a character creator, I t- I tend to go like slide everything to the max the first time. Mm-hmm. Sure. I don't, know yeah. if that, I don't know if that counts as uh, choosing the big player, but but uh, I, I typically do that, and and then uh, am amused for about thirty seconds, and then um, <laughs> just hit the random button because I don't actually care about what my character looks like. I really just wish they would make. Uh, I mean, Dragon's Dogma Two was an example. I had like a whole two hours on my stream a couple weeks back where I was just sitting there, just sad the whole time that they're asking me to make a character because I'm like, you've got the best character designers in the history of video games working on this thing. Can't they just make one for me, please? Like you all made Street Fighter. Like you've got people from there working on this. Just make somebody make me a cool, weird, generic fantasy person. That's what I want. I don't want to make it myself. I know a lot of people specifically play these types of games for the character creator, but there should be an array of attractive default options as well. The problem there might be the problem I had with Baldur's Gate 3, which is I'm like, oh, these are great characters. I'll just pick one of these. And then it turns out that uh, it's their story. Right. You 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 basically destroyed that character existing in the story. Uh, by playing as them, you no right. longer get to like understand that character. Yeah, in uh, I forget if I mentioned this, but in Baldur's Gate three, I was using that character creator, and then it was it was I was made aware that I was just making Elena from from Street Fighter three <laughs> without realizing. <laughs> I was made like, aware? Oh. Did they did they tell you that? Did they send put a pop up? <laughs> yeah, there's a pop little up. pop up. <laughs> cer- cer- certain parties <laughs> in the home tip. were like, "Are you just making Elena?" And I was like, oh, "Clippy popped uh, up." Uh, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It yeah. looks like you're making a Street Fighter character. Can I help? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just like an autocomplete where it just fills in the rest of it. Anyway, when when I wanna when I wanna do fishing, that's when I choose Big the Cat. Mm, oh, yeah. there you go. <laughs> ba boom. Oh. I just received word from corporate that off the success of Hell Divers switching from top down to third person. Uh, they want us to get ahead of the curve by developing a fourth person shooter. What do we do with that? Fourth person? Hmm. Fourth person. I could see the marketing folks from uh, like the Rainbow Six games saying that that was fourth person because you have to control other people as well as your own character in third person. Yeah. It wouldn't really make sense, but I could see that happening. We skipped kind of like Windows 9 here. We kind of skipped right over the second person shooter, a game where you just get shot, which I guess any (laughs) Call of Duty can be a second person shooter if you uh, aren't good enough, if you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Right? Uh, You know what I'm talking about. Um, I always get shot in those. 
Uh, I mean, okay, so fourth person shooter, like if, if somebody really, uh, somebody came to me wanting, actually asking for a design for something like this, it would be comically easy to make an excitingly interesting game about managing like a fire teams, mm-hmm. right? Where it's like, I've got my AI bot team of Overwatch heroes versus somebody else's AI bot team of Overwatch heroes. And all I'm doing is making managerial decisions and I have access to a bunch of different cameras I can switch to with my yeah. one through four keys. You know, you got Five Nights at Freddy's is already out there. Uh, you it's know, almost an RTS. Yeah, yeah. When you turn an, an FPS into an RTS uh, and then, you know, you make it all about camera angles and vantage points and, uh, you know, management, basically an FPS Overwatch hero team management simulator uh you know millions and millions of dollars probably uh to to make something like this but i don't know uh it's not what i exactly want to do with my life but i could do it if anybody listening has you know 100 mil 100 mil something like that i'd be bored but i could do it five years <laughs> so was it third person shooter was that the specific fourth, fourth person, person shooter. Shooter. Fourth per- sorry fourth person shooter okay. yeah yeah we would market this as a fourth person shooter it would even be called fourth person would be the name of the game. The fourth person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. fourth person is the uh, is the w- woke sequel to The Third Man. Instead of The Third Man. <laughs> We're halfway to the seventh <laughs> guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The woke sequel. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fourth person shooter. All right. Well, now that's what yeah. the game is. Wait, why are they called yeah. third person shooters? That's so woke. Shouldn't it be called third man shooters? Right? <laughs> right. Well, What's still, when you, when you get an extra life, you get a free man. So we still have that. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah. Not I've, for I've, long. <laughs> I've never, I've never said that. Did any of you ever actually use that phrase? No. What, third, oh, third man? man? No, free- no, a free man. Oh, free man. Other uh, people I have, did around yeah. me, but not me. I have, uh, that, I've lived that, all over this god darn country. I've heard <laughs> free man. I've heard free guy. But for me, it's all, I've heard one up. For me, it's always been extra life. Extra yeah, life. Extra extra life. life. 100% yeah. of the time. But and, I, I've heard it all, I've heard it all four ways somewhat equally. Yeah. As it a took child. me, it took me so long to realize that that dumb free, free guy movie was yeah. like a joke a about one ups. Uh, extra lives. Mm-hmm. I I actually didn't know because uh, I had that? never heard that before. No, is it regional, a, Tim? Is there a part of the country that free man is said more frequently? Well, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm from. In case anyone here didn't was unclear about this, I am from United States military installations. Is where I'm from. I grew up on mm-hmm. military bases. Yeah. So, um, you know, before they join the military, people are from a place, right? Generally. And then they get married, have children in while joined the military. So children have their parents as regional accents. I don't know how it happens, but you end up with stuff intermingled. Uh-huh. I had kids calling things boards, kids calling stuff levels, stages. We had board level and stage, right? Like kids being like, I can't get past to the eighth board of Super Mario. Like what? It's a board. <laughs> They're calling it a board. Like that's gotta it, be that's gotta be from uh like Chicago area, right? Because of arcade uh, yeah, penetration, yeah. you would think midway and such. Yeah, yeah. there's a. Uh, it's, well, I, it's, I don't know that people like played arcade games more in Chicago than anywhere else. You know, they like, made they them, made them, but they made yeah. them, which is. But I feel like the parlance would leak Come. into society. Maybe. Yeah. But like, if you read old video game magazines, it's boards, like the '80s ones. So mm, it's just yeah. coming from like it it's would, coming from your frame of reference for video games being Pac-Man. Video games yeah. and computer entertainment called them boards, I believe, all the way up into the uh, late NES era. So. Andy Eddy might still be doing that right now. Yeah, you know what? More God darn God bless to him, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. I agree. I like him. Yeah. Yeah. I Man, I, I remember reading Andy Eddy as a child. I saw him months ago. I still right, see Last him. word on fourth person shooters. Oh, uh, last word oh. is that uh, I knew a guy in my adult life who said I won a game. Meaning I won he it. beat it. Oh, yeah, which game? Yeah. Do you know? Geist Force. Geist, Geist Force. Force. Wow. Oh, no, Geist. No, Geist. Sorry, Geist. Geist Force was the unreleased Dreamcast games. I meant Geist on I thought I thought we game. were about to start talking about Geist Crusher up in no. here. And uh, uh, the reason I remember that is because uh, this person's last name and Brandon might know who I'm talking about now was Geist. Oh yeah. Oh, so he needed to play the game because mm-hmm. he was tired right. of he was tired of of uh, 
of, of extremely beautiful women approaching him at social <laughs> engagements and when yeah. uh, who, who upon learning his last name started immediately gushing about the video game geist is that what it was and he yeah, just he no. needed he needed to make sure he knew oh geist yeah like the video game <laughs> and now he's got to talk to supermodels about about this video game he's never played yeah embarrassing yeah. sweat and bullets i gotta win this game <laughs> i gotta win geist is there a video game called Sweating Bullets? There should be. Well, it's yeah. a Megadeth song. You, you, you keep you keep talking. I'll look it up. Yeah, we're going to quickly develop the game Sweating Bullets uh, during this break. Oh, is it break time? Okay, well, there's nothing called Sweating Bullets. Oh, well. I'm going to go sweat some bullets into the toilet. <laughs> <Yee-hoo, huh>? Nice. <laughs> oh, my God. Kaboom. Welcome back. To insert credit, it's time for us to spelunk once more into Carl's Bad Cavern. This is the part of the show where if you're a subscriber to patreon.com slash insert credit, like so many kind individuals, uh, you can get access to a forum that allows you to send us your questions. You also get monthly bonus episodes and other neat surprises. This week's question comes from Rose, who asks, what would the ideal starting lineup be for the Dreamcast 2? Starting lineup. They, they yeah. would just literally make Sonic Adventure 3, dude, and they would call it Sonic Adventure 3. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, starting lineup means like the... It, okay. it means the launch lineup. Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, in some parts of the country, they call it a starting, <laughs> a starting lineup. That's <laughs> <laughs> where they, we're the same place they call it. They call levels boards. Uh, yeah. it's, uh, <laughs> the launch games are called the starting lineup, yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in, in Sega City, um, interestingly, they call levels zones. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a Sonic the Hedgehog reference. Uh, Sagacity. Thank you. They call them. They call okay. Them what are the launch titles for the Dreamcast Two? That's Dreamcast Two. So we're, yeah. I yeah Sonic Adventure Three. I think we're. Are we? Uh, here's here's a, a question first. Are we presuming Dreamcast Two comes out now or came out yeah. in like 2005? Now. Good now. question. The question specified now as opposed now. to that's okay. good. That's Historically. good. All right. So uh, a, a Yakuza game, a, a like a Dragon game, mm-hmm. will absolutely be one of the launch yeah. games and th- they'll delay yeah. the la- the release of the dreamcast 2 to to accommodate mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah that makes there sense there is definitely um an outrun and or crazy taxi one of those two mm-hmm. um but they gotta have something new going on though it's gotta be a little gimmicky i think there's gonna be uh a couple of like sequels to legendary old games that are just not good like there would be like mm-hmm. a new Jet Set Radio that's like really not good. Yeah, I know they're making a new Jet Set Radio now. We don't need to talk about that. They they could make another Altered Beast that's not very good. Mm. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Another three D Shinobi that's not very good. Except they'll all actually be great if you're uh, if you're chill. Yeah, uh, they'll all be really good. Um, I actually I want to I want to think actually that knowing that Sega kind of sucks. I think yeah. no offense to them that they kind of suck at making uh, hardware right. We love the Yakuza games, et cetera, et cetera. I think that they would go like the Knights into Dreams direction and not have a Sonic right away and then possibly never have a Sonic on the Dreamcast 2. Oh, so it's the Saturn 2. Yeah, yeah. So it would basically, the Dreamcast 2 would be the Saturn 2 as well. So I feel like they would make a game that was an original IP that they then at the last minute make connected to the Sonic universe. And I'm thinking the game would be called Emerald Hills is the name of the game. They would Chill, connect to the that's Sonic where I grew universe, up. but it would be like a human character living in this uh, Sonic-like world where they very quickly Sonicify the game, thinking like a Mar- like a Shigeru Miyamoto putting Star Fox into Dinosaur Planet sort of situation is the yeah. game that for some reason sprang to mind. And it's just an over-ambitious uh, action-adventure RPG sort of Horizon Zero Dawn style video game. That's got too much stuff in the pot. Two, yeah, two things. But one, by that token, maybe instead of a Yakuza game, they'll have a Rent-A-Hero game. Yeah. And, oh, okay. and, I and like this. try to bring that back. And then my other thinking is that they will feel, they'll still have a chip on their shoulder from when they felt like a lot of the things Nintendo did with the Wii were just things that they had started with the Dreamcast, like the motion control in the fishing controller. And so, and so they'll they'll be like, dead set on having a, a peripheral that's like weird i think they'll maybe they'll try to bring back 
typing of the dead uh, with a, with a foolishness. No, I mean, I'm but thinking light gun games. They're going to go straight. Light they're going to they're yeah. going to be like try to yeah. have the ultimate luxurious light gun game experience because you know the Ghost Squad and whatever for the Wii. That game was cool, right? It's true. Should the Wii not have LA been a golden age of uh, it should of have light gun games? Yeah, should have been. Didn't, yeah. Didn't, what yeah, happened we didn't there? Exactly have it. I worked on a light gun game for uh, for the Wii called uh, Wicked Monsters Blast. The problem was you had to c- have these big plastic pieces of crap to slot the Wii mote in to Wait, make it this, feel. Was like... this a Wii game or was this a, a Malaysian VHS tape? Like, what? <laughs> it was made in Thailand, Tim. So. Oh, that rules, man! <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's it's even a, better. It's a, a Malaysian VHS tape. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So I, I think they're going to have like a, a new original IP that's just not cool at all, like an, a new platform hero. Um, sure. I think I think it's uh, a light gun buckets. hero. No, Billy buckets. Billy uh, buckets. Billy and, and he attacks things with his bucket, um, and he can uh, throw the bucket at a wall and like catch it on his head, and then like buckets on his head. But when he does that, he panics and runs back and forth, and he's invincible when he does that. You know who's going to be in charge of this project? They're bringing Yuji Naka out of jail. Yeah, you know, he's, he's going <laughs> to direct Billy Buckets. His, his he's going to have fail. he's going to have two ankle bracelets and two wrist right. bracelets, and he's going to have he's going to have a battle royale collar around his neck. Yeah, yeah. He can. He's only allowed yeah. to go between his house and the and the Sega of Japan. As office. soon as he thinks about insider trading, yeah. his his head blows up. <laughs> yeah, he he's been enlisted by Amanda Waller for the Suicide Squad to develop yeah, exactly. this one game. Oh man, I love it. <laughs> Yu Suzuki is going to come back to. To, uh, fully develop the world of Air Twister into a full reactivized entertainment game. Mm, yeah, I'd do it. <laughs> Air Twister's cool. I'd play you know all what? these. I don't like the music in Air Twister. The music was a huge turn off. Huge it was turn off. Funny in the trailer. Uh, yeah, and the then extent I'm like, of the usefulness for this. Music. I wish I could remember the incredibly hilarious. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, yeah. Uh, Matthew Kumar was was in the home today, uh, not today, uh, earlier in in the month. He was talking about that soundtrack, and he was like, "It was basically she's a chiller bean." <laughs> was, yeah, very good, very good, yeah. and very true. Yeah. Very good. God, I was listening to Queen the other day, yeah. and it was making me want to just play the game Unicorn Overlord, which is interesting because mm-hmm. that's not Ogre Battle, Ogre Battle, which has all the Queen references in it. Yeah. And it's not even really that close, but it's close enough that listening to Queen made me want to return to Unicorn Overlord. Is Unicorn Overlord the best Vanillaware game in years? Yes. Next I question. Haven't, I haven't gotten it yet, but I'm, okay. uh, I'm ready to oh. believe. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I'll be just as long year. as you don't, uh, you know, don't, don't pop any popcorn for the story cutscenes. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't have any popcorn or beverages ready. Just have a bottle of water. Uh, yeah, you don't. You don't. Just you know, it's it's all about the tactics. Got it. Who is the most famous person that you think could beat you at Street Fighter? Famous for playing video games doesn't count. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, she could do anything. Jamie Lee Curtis actually has competed in Evo. Oh, oh is that, that, that might be the canonical it's, answer. It's then. true. Yeah, she was there at the one time we went. She was in cosplay. Oh, yeah, I knew she cosplayed. I didn't I know she was a Street Fighter too. Jamie Lee Curtis being in cosplay. I, I knew that, but I didn't know she played Street Fighter competitively. I mean, not particularly super well. Probably. Okay. I mean, I don't think she she didn't yeah. win. She. I, well, here's I don't, the I thing: rec- like, I don't recall her un- mask right. singer unmasking I'm, herself I'm on say, stage. I'm gonna say I'm gonna guess Lil Nas X can beat me oh, in Street that's Fighter. That's a good one. I think I'm really bad at Street Fighter. Do I have to answer this? I mean. A lot of famous people, probably. Choo- choose choose someone fun. Okay. Yeah. I'll think about that. Who would you like to beat you in Street Fighter, Frank? I don't know that that that's not a kink I have. Well, but you get you get to <laughs> you get to hang out with them for a minute and be like, oh, good game. The mm-hmm. most famous person who could beat you in Street. This is a very complex. This is the question itself kind of becomes the conversation. Yeah, there's point. a lot going on here. So that's that's fun. I kind of designed it that way. Thank you. Yeah. I I feel I feel like if it was the '90s. Basically, anybody in hip hop would be the answer because I I feel like there were a lot of folks playing Street Fighter yeah. at that time. You know who couldn't beat me at Street Fighter? Who's that? OJ Simpson. Yeah, he's not alive. <laughs> no, not now. Maybe in the nineties. 
Maybe yeah, a Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lord. He comes from the demon realm or whatever happens in Mortal Kombat. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, that and, you know, the like extremely grisly, uh, like bloody murders that happen in those, in those games. Yeah. I had a thought that uh, if you played Street Fighter against Serena Williams, it would take her like two minutes to realize how the game works and then she would Ooh. instantly be better than you. That's probably true. Could be a thing, yeah. I like this. People who are just good at stuff are out there. Should probably be even better at Virtua Fighter. It's a really good one. Like just being beaten by Serena Williams sounds like a pretty good time. Yeah. BWSW. I thought you said you didn't have that kink. I don't know. I guess maybe I do. I, I'm helping Frank discover himself yeah. right now. I, I think I might now. Let's talk about who we'd like to kill us. Who do you want to kill you, Frank? Who would you let commit? Who's who would you let commit a Mortal Kombat fatality? What celebrity? I got to go Serena, guys. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's a good one. Brandon, what celebrity would you like to commit a Mortal Kombat fatality on you IRL, uh, ending your mortal life? Maybe Michelle Yeoh, because uh, she'd, she'd do a, a, a really Im- impressive, like, l- very long kick, and my head would just pop right off. Oh, that's just really good. Just rocket into space. Could be good. Okay, how about you, Alex Jaffe? Uh, I have a question. Is this in public? And can the person who kills me be convicted for murder? Uh, you're on oh. death row and it's on TV. So, oh, I mean, so the, this is a state sponsored execution. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, they're getting you, paid uh, to kill me mm-hmm. or they're granting a make a wish. I heard that they got rid of the yeah. last meal rule. Yeah, um, that's a joke. I don't I don't know if that's true. It's kind of like the guy, the inventor of Segway rolling off of a cliff or the, the inventor of the Atkins diet dying of a massive heart attack. I don't know if it's true um, that they got rid of the f- last meal. They got rid of last meals, but they do let you choose your celebrity executioner. It is the year 2028. Jaffe, you're on death row for uh, All right. uh, podcasting. Uh, what celebrity <laughs> uh, do you get to kill? <laughs> and celebrity has no choice. They have to do it. I'm going to say John Cena. Uh, because John he'd Cena. be really nice about it. Mm-hmm. I think it would be a very comforting final few moments. You might get suplexed. He'd be particularly apologetic. Would, he, would you want him to punch you? <laughs> Dealer's <laughs> choice, man. He's the pro. But you might, you might ruin John Cena's life uh, by doing so. That's the direction I'm going. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, whose life can I ruin by legally obligating them to murder me on television? So, yeah. Frank, how would you how would you want Serena Williams to punch you in the heart? Is that well? This? I don't want to ruin her life anymore. Okay, so that's that's interesting. That's where I'm going. I, I had I hadn't considered the you know okay the, well the let's, ramifications let's, of yeah of, of this. I, th- I think Michelle Yeoh has already killed. Oh, so yeah. I I'm let's, a- let's assume this is a, like a shake and bake <laughs> clone. Where they they make they make a clone of the person that has all of their memories and then it turns into Jello uh, and falls. Oh, that's through a, not as appealing anymore. Yeah, I, I want it to be the actual. It person. looks really real to you, and you don't know. So it was just for me. <laughs> I yeah, know. you don't know that it's not the real person. It's but it's so realistic. Well, then in that case, I would still want to ruin someone's life. <laughs> and it's in, and it's sponsored. It's sponsored by Shake and Bake. Uh, we yeah. have to say. To make sure it's a shake and bake. They wear in a shake and bake shirt. Shake and bake brand clone. Mine is I would want Sheena Ringo to shoot me in the stomach with a small pistol. <laughs> that's right. pretty and, then, and that's what that's I would how you want. you want to die? Yeah. I'm going to get shot in the stomach with a small pistol, a vest pocket. That's hard. Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. A vest pocket, I think, would be the gun I would choose. And then uh, I would just stand there. Well, I would be on the ground. That's what I would want. Yeah. The crowd goes <laughs> wild. Woo! <laughs> and then she sings a little song. Sounds a little something like this. No song. I'm not hiring. Uh, we're, we're not, we're not, uh, you know. No, she might be so overjoyed. She gets enough of that from everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Here's a question from my personal dirt bag. Uh, a question that's been lingering in the maybe I'll ask this someday file I've got. Uh, what is the drinking a caffeinated beverage right after taking a melatonin of video games? Well, I can't take either of those, so <laughs> I'm going to have to do some workshopping here. Uh, but we're talking about slowing down and speeding up at the same time is what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, just to see which wins. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. Um, yeah. Is it possibly, this This sounds miserable, but so does taking a melatonin and caffeine. Um, is it possibly pl- uh, playing a game on your phone, like doing your dailies on your phone while a cutscene is happening in a game that's on your big screen? Hmm. Yeah, maybe, because it... It's hard to do two things at the same time in a video game that counterbalance each. I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. I'm having a tough time with this. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to ask it, so yeah, here I, it is. I lay this before you. I feel like doing doing your 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 dailies in a gotcha game while you're watching like the cutscenes of The Last of Us Part Two, diminishing one in favor of the other to sort of see what can what can command your full attention. But the answer will be neither. And you'll be dissatisfied with the experience, which I think is is the ultimate result. Yeah, that's what I want here. Yeah, something like dissatisfaction. that. Dissatisfaction. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think it'd just be uh just be regular style. <laughs> I mean, just basically <laughs> turn it on a video game for fun and playing it. I think it's and then not have the, fun. It's, it's the same thing. I mean, how much caffeine are we talking about? And what's the milligramage of the of the melatonin? Oh, that's you know, a good these question. Things, these things matter. I think the spirit of the question is: it is enough to affect you? Is it a cup uh, in both directions? Not yeah. A, cu- a cup of coffee and ten milligrams, five milligrams, something like that. Because uh, I mean, I gotta say, it just seems kind of regular. You know, here's 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 one thing that came to mind: <laughs> is there was a time where a lot of companies, especially French ones, wanted to do things on the DS or other platforms where there's like. There's like two guys and one's on the top of a platform and one's on the bottom of the platform. And you have to do things with both of them to make them get through a level. And it's never been fun, but people keep trying to do it. I feel like that's kind of in the zone for me. Like just playing one of those. I think the full answer to this question is uh, hundreds and hundreds of unfinished, unreleased Nintendo DS games is the answer. Oh, yeah. Uh, Nintendo DS games that that the designers just couldn't crack it. They couldn't mm-hmm. crack through the the pachydermis outer layer of how do you make this fun, and then they they just move on to you know other prototypes. Yeah, yeah. I, Henry Hatworth was a game that did come out. It was a platformer and a puzzle game. Wow, yeah, that, that did exist. Yeah, wow. and you you had to play them both simultaneously, and it was like, oh man, I don't know if I like either of these. Henry things. Hatworth, yeah. I think I prefer Hermie Hopperhead to be yeah, honest. What is a hat word? I'm a Billy Buckets guy. Billy Buckets. <laughs> what about Billy Hatcher? You ever, you ever chilled? Oh with yeah, him? yeah. I have chilled with Billy Hatcher. He yeah. does hatch those eggs, or does he? Does he ever hatch the eggs? I didn't play it long enough to find out. God, can you imagine Dreamcast Two, uh, like Super Monkey Ball Act Zero, and it's like an, <laughs> an Unreal Engine Three looking like disgusting chimpanzee in like a like in like chains inside of a plexiglass ball. Like a disgusting oatmeal skinned chimpanzee. Oh, and it's got like feces on it, like very, <laughs> very clearly. Yeah. A huge turd in one hand, a huge banana in the other, a turd stained banana. Still revving up my engine here. I'm still, uh, I still haven't cracked the seal, but I'm still getting ready to say that Bomberman Act Zero is actually pretty good. Still haven't played it. Not no, yet. No, been no. About 15, I, 20 years. I busted, I busted that seal a while back, and uh, it comes up all the time still in discourse. You see people bring up Bomberman Act Zero, and it's like, Bomberman was a grim sci-fi game, dude. Look at the box art of the original Famicom version. It, it was always had a grim sci-fi veneer. You're a robot slave attempting to break out of an underworld. Like, I mean, it's it's it was always there, man. Yeah. Leave Bomberman Act Zero alone. It's still it's a pretty decent video game, actually. I yeah. played it. Whatever. I'm gonna give it a shot. One of these one of these years, it's happening. Oh, fire it up. Just plug it in. Smoke Hello. it. Hello. Uh, you, you, uh, cause uh, I don't want to like spoil anything, but we're on episode three thirty four here. We're about twenty six episodes away from uh, hearing a lot from me about Bomberman Act Zero. So get nice. excited. Oh, really? Nice. Uh, yeah, it's good to know. You know, don't don't you know don't do you. In summary, the Xbox three hundred and sixty was the Dreamcast too. I mean, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on. Well, right. With yeah, the Xbox kind of was, and then it was the three hundred and sixty. The 360 right. was absolutely the Dreamcast 2. The Xbox was Dreamcast 1.5. Indeed. I think uh, Gun Valkyrie can be explained in no no more certain terms than Dreamcast 1.5. 100%, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's time for us to go to our lightning round. I'm making good on a promise. Uh, a few weeks ago, we did a thing where we tried to associate every single video game console with a particular genre or flavor of video games. Oh, yeah. uh, I'm going to repost that list in the chat. Uh, I'm not letting any of us leave until we add five new consoles to this list. Consoles. Um, 
consoles. or systems, as it were. Mm, some people, leave. some people call them consoles. Some people call them systems. Depends where you're from. Yeah. So how about Nintendo <sighs> Wii U? How's that? So definitive, like genres. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. What's the Nintendo Wii U? Um, I, I think it's uh, uh, down ports from the other systems with uh, stuff tacked on. Yeah. Future Switch games. <laughs> Future Switch games. That's a pretty fun. Oh, it's yeah, not a Switch, genre. Nintendo but... Switch prototypes. Yeah. Yeah, Switch yeah. prototypes. Yeah, I guess that's... I mean, the Nintendo the Wii U has the most Zelda games on it, and I think Zelda's a genre. Yeah. Is it the most Zelda games on it? It's got a... Uh, so, it, it, I mean, it's got Breath of the Wild on it, uh, but Breath of the Wild is obviously a Switch game, uh, much like Twilight Princess is obviously a Nintendo Wii game, despite also being on the GameCube. Uh, we've got the remake of Twilight Princess, the re, the remaster of Twilight Princess, the remaster of Wind Waker, and the, uh, the, the pre-master of uh, Breath of the Wild. I don't know. The Wii is the Wii U's of this Zelda console. Future Switch games. That's good. The Switch itself isn't on this list yet. That's good. Oh, PlayStation 5. I know what the PlayStation 5 is. You ready? Yeah. Is everybody that? ready? PlayStation 5 yeah. is Spider-Man. <laughs> 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 I, I just, I crunched all the numbers on all the exclusive <laughs> PS5 games and it's Spider-Man. That's it. It's Spider-Man. That's, that's the PS5. It's Spider-Man. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know what else it is. They have a remaster of Spider-Man. A PS4 Spider-Man. They got Miles Morales, and they got Spider-Man Two. Um, That's it. And then Horizon Forbidden West is just another Spider-Man and yeah. uh, God of War Ragnarok. I thought I was going to say God of War Valhalla, but that's Assassin's Creed. That's it's basically Spider-Man, but you can't swing on webs. Um, yeah. Last of Us Two remastered Spider-Man, but you can't swing on webs. Uh, and also, there's no New York. You know what? You know you see what I'm saying. It's basically it's all Spider-Man. I do. It's the Spider-Man box. Uh, yeah. I got a quick one. Neo Geo Pocket Color. Tiny fighting. Mm, like oh, that's that. good. Yep. yep. Um, God, I can't believe the PS3 has got no games. S- S- Sega Sega Master System. Uh, what is that? Brazil? <laughs> is that no, the genre? No. no, it's not. But it it is. Um, it's like a different kind of platformer. It's like you're. Um, it's more of an Alex Kid than. A, I, I think of the platformers as being very stiff. They're stiff mm-hmm. platformers. It's stiff. But I, I like don't know stiff platformers. Platformers. Platformer. There's there was a lot of stuff on there. I mean, they're still selling that. Wait on what? What console are we talking about? Master System. The Master System. Oh yeah, that's a, mm, not a mm, not a good one. Doesn't have a huge character to me, but I think I do think platformers are. In I think there. it's stiff platformer. Yeah. Right. Platformer. It's like if yeah. it's like video games to give your European uh, kid <laughs> brother uh, yeah. for his yeah. fourth birthday. It's like yeah. what. Like if you, for some reason, your kid brother's European and you're not. Right. And, and it's like, they're not ready for Nintendo. Like that would just destroy their brain. You the doctor like, said, get him into the, it. Slowly. The doctor said Nintendo would kill him. So we got, him, uh, <laughs> we got an Alex kid. Yeah. yeah. He's a little bit confused, but he, he understands yeah. the basics. I'm trying to do like a really old, like eighties console other than 2600. And they're all the same. You know what? Fine. You know what? Like, all the early 80s console can be the same as the 2600, right? So, yeah. yeah. Atari 5200, Coleco. 80s arcade. ColecoVision, 80s In- arcade, right? <laughs> Intellivision actually feels a little not, different. Yeah. Intellivision is like like weird experiments Yeah, with limited hardware, but I don't know how to define I don't know how to, how to quantify that. The Intellivision is like... Uh, I like Utopia had like that D and D game that was kind mm-hmm. of roguelike. The Intellivision is Pong for swingers. Let's face it. <laughs> Let's just call it what it is, okay? You ever met a person who with fond memories of the Intellivision? You know uh, what's going on <laughs> with those guys. You yeah. know what their fond memories are. <laughs> yeah. These California guys wearing leather pants at age 65 or whatever. You know who I'm talking about. Not a specific person. I'm talking about a guy I met at a hacker space once. (laughs) I was there because I was promised money. That's in television, okay? (laughs) I mentioned liking video games. The guy was some sort of an investor. He said, I used to have an Intellivision. True story. It's the end of my story. What about the Xbox? The pre-Xbox 360 Xbox, the first Xbox. That's a Dreamcast 1.5. Halo. <laughs> it is Halo. Uh, actually, what I think of is PS2, but better graphics. Mm, That's true also. Yeah. Yep. Well, so wait, what's the PS2? Third-person action adventure? Yeah, I do I do think FPS with um, with Xbox, but that really is truly because of Halo and not really yeah. anything else. Um, yeah, Halo and Halo one. Killers. 
Yeah. It was a darn tootin' good one. Well, it's true. It's true. I think we need one more. One more? Uh, all right. We got all the PSs. We got the Xboxes that count. We got PlayStation Portable. What about that? Well, we can do Xbox One. It's a computer. Exposone? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's Game Pass is what it is. It's Game Pass. Oh, yeah. I, I like that. Xbox One. Yeah, Pass. I like that, too. Yeah. What about Xbox One X, though? It's also Game Pass. Yeah. I don't know about Game Pass. Game Pass ain't Game a Pass genre. Game Pass in HDR. Game yeah. Pass ain't a genre. I don't really think... It, I think Xbox One is the exact point where consoles stop having identity. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah. it's funny to say the PS5 is Spider-Man. Uh, yeah. The PS4 definitely had a, a genre identity, but... Uh, well, I think Game Pass is the same thing as Spider-Man. It's like, I don't know, this is what you think of. Like, there's no identity here. It's just whatever is on Game Pass. Load something up, see what's in your bong. <laughs> yeah. <Don't> be, yeah. <laughs> just, just light it and smoke it. Yeah. Just set your whole right. bong on fire. We're flopped into the bong today. I'm happy putting Game Pass there. Are we going to remember what Slatformer on this list means next time? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Stiff. No. That's part of why I want to keep it Slatformer. Uh... <laughs> Uh, it's <laughs> Slatformer, Jaffy. Right. Stiff I like Slatformer. Slatformer, but fine. No, that's, that's wrong. Slatformer is maximally funny because it's three consonants in a row. It's all about anybody out there who's like world building for a fantasy uh, novel series. Try putting three consonants in a row sometimes. Yeah, it's short for St. Louis Platformer. I'm not talking CHs, THs. Those are just one consonant. They would have been in the old days anyway. Back, you know, before movable type, um, mm -hmm. they would have been, uh, they would have been, we would have combined those. Uh, let's try putting three consonants in a row. Give it a shot. Okay. Is that your recommendation for this week? Putting three consonants in a row? No. Stop. Yeah. No. Forget that. Okay. Maybe it's time to give our recommendations. Maybe it is time. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to start off with the, with the uh, traditional apology tour. Oh, yeah. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Everybody's favorite segment. Oh, yeah, Lord. so uh, I, w I was ba baking those dog treats that I mentioned uh, a while ago. And I mentioned to uh, certain parties that live in the house that mine always come out different and weird. Why, why are mine always puffy, cake-like dog treats? And uh, the ones that this other person makes are more like little dog puffy cookies. Cake-like dog treats. And uh, through various conversation confusions, it was revealed that despite the recipe always having said one cup of flour... In actuality, it was a half cup of flour. And that so uh, now that I have um, imparted to you this dog treat recipe, I feel that I have to update it to be the correct half a cup of flour, one egg, half a cup of, flour. Half a, cup of a wet ingredient such as pumpkin or yogurt or something, and then uh, a sixth of a cup of peanut butter and also all of your dog treat dust from whatever other, other dog treats you have. So that's that's that. I've, uh, I got two little dogs, what were basically manufactured in a, a clean room uh, for building uh, uh, CPUs, so they can't have any flour. So, Oh, yeah. Anything gluten adjacent, they, they can't consume. That's too bad for them, little guys. They're, they're little microchips, these dogs. And then I'm going to recommend somewhere, I think it was maybe on the forums, I, I shared a Klaus Nomi thing, and someone uh, mentioned that they, they uh, couldn't unsee it. Or whatever. And I said, good, because Klaus Naomi's cool. And so I'm going to recommend to everybody, if you want to see a weird Pierrot-like German person um, sing some virtuosic nonsense, uh, check out Klaus Naomi singing Cold Song live. If you want to hear the, the, the range of a human voice, check that out. It's pretty cool and neat to see. Check that out on your YouTubes. That's what I got. I got one more, but it needs more research. So I'll get back to you later next week. Or you could do it right now and prepare the apology segment <laughs> i could okay well there, there's a band called trencher yeah. from oakland they're kind of like a thrash crossover band uh reminiscent of morbid saint true true metal persons will will be aware of that um the problem is there's about 15 other bands called trencher and i don't remember uh i don't know how to tell you to find this one um wait it's a trench metal dot bandcamp.com there there you, you got your Ooh. your trencher they only have three songs they're very new uh but they're pretty good give them a shot All right until you find out anything else about them yeah 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 well, hopefully hopefully they're cool they're from here they better be cool see i thought the research was like i don't know if they're racist 
No, like yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. It it, yeah. it was it wasn't that that it, but that is the traditional query, especially with black metal bands, which this is mm-hmm. not one of. But uh, mm-hmm. with 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 a lot of metal groups, I remember growing up as a young person and being like. Uh, I like this music, and so they must have the same ideology as me. And that turned out to not be true a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found yeah. out later. Uh, Someday you're going to learn that you don't know anything about anybody. Indeed. It's kind of like when I was young and I thought attractive people were smart. Right. Yeah. Like, well, they figured something out because look at them. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's, I will say that it's very funny in the reverse when you get your uh, your conservatives trying to play Rage Against the Machine at their shows and then because they think that uh, th- they they miss the whole part about how that uh, won't do what you tell me thing is about cops. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. like... <laughs> they think it's uh, about big government. Yeah, they think it's about I think a lot government. of them think it's, think it's about mom and vegetables. Uh, <laughs> For sure they do. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's fair. Do. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Frank, you got one? God darn guys. Oh, now that the recipe has been improved, I recommend eating Brandon's dog treats. Sure. Yeah. Eat them up. The dust really comes through now. Yeah. To be clear, the, does this... Daddy's dusters. Uh, is this like to turn them into human food? I'm just kidding. That's a joke. Thank you. So what I would recommend everyone do this week is... um, You know, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've watched a few Netflix shows this year. And I've, I've enjoyed some aspect of all of them. But none so much as this latest uh, Netflix show that I watched this week... Uh, which is called Ripley, which is based on the novel The Talented Mr. Ripley. Can we just say Netflix is the new Tubi, basically, in terms of uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they've done it somehow. They've 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 turned themselves into the replacement for the cheap replacement of themselves, and they charge more money for it than, than they did before. before. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's incredible. Um, this Ripley show. Um, if you're a fan of the 1999 motion picture, The Talented Mr. Ripley, starring Matt Damon and Jude DeLaw, and or a fan of the Patricia Highsmith novels uh, uh, known collectively as the Ripley ad, which I believe is uh, The Talented Mr. Ripley, uh, Ripley Underground, Ripley's Game, The Boy Who Followed Ripley and Ripley Underwater. That's all five of them off the top of my head. That's proof that I've read them. Whoa! Um, it's proof that I've read them. I read them in high school. Um, big fan of those books. Uh, um, real big fan of those books. If you've never seen the film The American Friend by uh, Vim Vendors, that's also one of my favorite films, if you want to watch that. As is the film Ripley's Game, starring John Malkovich, another one of my top favorite films. The Talented Mr. Ripley, not necessarily in the group of my favorite films of all time. I enjoy it. Um, But this Ripley show on Netflix, if you are, for example, a child... First of all, I know we have a lot of child listeners, uh, Brandon's friends and such. I'm kidding. Uh, we have a lot of ch- child listeners. I don't really uh, even know what that would. I don't know yeah. if I should be insulted. It's like it doesn't really. Brandon's Brandon's cousins and, and nephews and nieces all listen to the show. That's the half the listenership. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I don't even know if Brandon has any nephews. Uh, and I don't care. I don't care. I have nephews. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter. I've got two nephews. Who cares? Do right? they listen to the show? No, they wouldn't be, actually. Not. One of them called me just yesterday and just to tell me he wouldn't be caught dead listening to this show. Yeah. And I was like, wow, do you even know about it? No, he said. And then he hung up. I think only one of us has a relative who listens to the show, and that's my mom. Yeah. So, hi, mom. That's, that's pretty good. My, my mom used to, but she bounced, man. I don't know what happened. My mom thinks I'm dead. <laughs> but anyway, this Ripley show, if you're a child and you're considering a career in film and uh, you've seen. Um, a Marvel movies. You've seen okay. I hate to I hate to invoke this phrase, but you've seen uh, some recent Oscar winners. You may have developed this concept in your mind that a movie, in order to be cinematic, uh, has to be uh, the ultra widest, ugliest aspect ratio, <laughs> and have yes. the most absolutely vacant, like Walmart store brand composition. Uh, with just stuff like huge, empty, vast, negative spaces, and the actor all the way on the right side of the screen to let you know they're they're looking at the person who in the next cut is on the left side of the screen. Like there's there's just a lot that drives me completely insane. With I'm going to go ahead and invoke this phrase: post Marvel, uh, uh, the film composition, staging, uh, blocking. Uh, I know what all these words mean, but right now I'm just saying them because I want to say if you don't know. And you want to learn a faster way than getting a textbook and memorizing the glossary. A faster way to learn how to make something look good is to watch this Ripley show Mm. where it is uh, 
pound for pound, ounce for ounce, uh, frame for frame, the best looking god darn new thing I've seen in a very, very long time. I don't, I don't speak much about cinematography on here because this is a video game podcast for children. Uh, for children who, who who would rather play video games than enjoy cinema. But if you want to see and, something... And talk to Uncle Brandon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is something I've had to explain to people many times during my life. You don't have to like it, you know? You don't, you don't, you don't, have, to, you don't have to be the world's biggest fan of this thing. But just watch it and, and just know this is, this, is what, this is what stuff can look like. I don't know. You watch the first 30 minutes of the first episode and, and you know, if, if you don't want to watch the whole show, I watched the whole show because I'm, I'm, I'm a freak. Um, and I loved it for what it was. Episode, if you can watch the first three episodes, episode three has some of the most just a gut blasting filmmaking I've ever seen. And it's just, it's something I put on at night after finishing my work before going to bed. And I'm, I'm like, I'm here to consume like I did with The Gentleman and Three Body Problem. I'm here to just, to, to just drink it down like a bottle of Gatorade, you know, guzzle it. Turn it into night pee, right? <laughs> is what I'm here to do with this thing. And instead, I'm getting god darn gut blasted by some of the best looking stuff I've ever seen. I have the first episode open in my browser right now, and I'm there. The Netflix has this thing where if you hover over the oh, yeah. uh, play bar, you can see little thumbnails, and just like yeah. every still I randomly land on looks gorgeous. Yeah, uh, so I would also recommend. That Green Frontier show that I mentioned a while ago as a Frontier. as a very, very good cinematographical experience. It really looks good. It's cool. And uh, you, nobody watched it. Uh, so you should definitely watch Green Frontier. No, nobody got there and watch that cool magical realism, true detective with a lady uh, show set in the Amazon. And there was another magical realism, true detective with a lady show that... Uh yeah that, that aired recently i can't remember what it was called yeah, it was called true detective uh but that, <laughs> that, that, that that was a that was a lot later than this one. Oh man i hate to say this but it was real bad yeah did you watch, watch it, it brandon nah i didn't oh, i was so sad they burned me so hard on that second season oh, that, second that, that, i know but yeah, pe yeah. people keep saying go back to it and i just couldn't i just couldn't i haven't watch the third season i like the third season watch the third third the third is good it's got Mahershala Ali and Stephen Dorff. I purchased one month of Netflix so that I could watch uh, Physical 100 and and uh, some so other. Stupid. It is stupid, but I I need shows to watch during my food time, and that's a great one. Well, check out that Ripley if you're around. Uh, if you still got it, the Ripley is something that has caused me an incredibly stupid confusion because I had been rewatch. I had been watching through all the Alien films. Uh huh. And uh, Netflix start keeps advertising me this Ripley with just like a, a like a very dark uh, oh, yeah, background yeah. and like the and the solo character and I'm like, is this an aliens thing? Every, every time I see it, I'm like, is this aliens? I can't tell the difference between Ripley, Ridley, uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, <laughs> uh, Ellen Ripley, Ellen yeah. from the show Ellen. I just I get I get confused all the time. But no, like a yeah, the Ripley show also is very very horror branded. Yeah. I noticed that. If you're a, f a friend of the books, uh, as I am, you know there's... So, okay, first of all, it, it blows my mind. I scroll down Instagram and I keep getting ads for The Ripley Show and I keep clicking on the comments and the comments make me want to just rip my brain out the top of my head, hair and all, because it's like, the comments are like, didn't they just make a movie of this? And it's like Matt Damon and Jude Law's uh, The Talented Mr. Ripley, directed by uh, Academy Award winner like 20 winner, years Anthony ago. was 25 years ago, dude. 25 years ago. I think it's okay to do it again. Uh, I think it's fine to do it again. They missed a lot of stuff. You know what? They missed a lot of the gay stuff that has been uh, uh, very thoughtfully, you know, I mean, that's, that's saying something too. It's been very thoughtfully reincorporated back into the story. And uh, this, this TV show puts it all, laser focuses it back in there. It's beautiful. It's, it's wonderful. I've got some recommendations of my own that I'd Is like to get right now. Uh, Is it Netflix? I haven't Is seen Ripley? it yet. Oh. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I might get around to it. I'm I'm intrigued. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode of Insert Credit or any episode, please rate and review our show wherever and however you can. Like Key Gray, who said, changed my brain, squad a la. You can also support us on patreon.com slash insert credit to pay everybody involved in this show with one exception. 
If you'd like to sponsor our show with an advertisement or a personal message, I'm taking those. Email me at show at insertcredit.com and we'll talk. Uh, we're not entertaining any AI based sponsors. So uh, if you're one of those guys, good luck. Good luck. Uh, you can also join our community at forums.insertcredit.com, newly refurbished. It's beautiful. You'll find videos of these episodes with specially curated visuals to enhance your experience on youtube.com slash insert credit show. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn <laughs> with music as always by Kurt Feldman. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Spaulding. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And the winner of this episode was Frank. Congratulations. Why not? Wow. Yeah. It's been a while since uh, I knew who the winner was. Yeah. Why the heck not? Right? Well, that's exciting. I've decided to start announcing that at the end as my new sign-off. Very, all right. Well, sounds good.